Shabbat Shalom. When we're filming this, Shalom to everyone else watching this on the replay. It is a blessing that you are here. Hallelujah. Teach us to number our days. Well, how do we do that? Basically, we do a sundial experiment. So this picture here is just a summary, basically an overview of what we're going to talk about. So we want to have a board and an object, and then we have the sun. The sun casts light, the shadow casts a shadow, or excuse me, the gnomon, the object casts a shadow. And then throughout the day, we mark the tip of that shadow. So when we're at the summer and winter solstice, if we follow this line here, we'll see a curved line. And as we get closer to the equinox, it'll get straighter and straighter. And then the day of the equinox or Tukufa, we will have a straight line. And that's what we're looking for is that straight line. So some basic questions we'll talk about when to mark the shadow, where to mark, what do we use to mark the shadow and how. So when to mark, start practicing today, literally as soon as possible, the sooner the better. It's better to practice before the Tukufa equinox. Everyone lives in different areas and you will learn a lot more from practicing. So it's important to test your specific area to see what works best for you. So when to track, we wanna track once a week leading up to the Tukufa, just so you can test your setup. And we wanna track at least one full day the week before, again, just to practice because the sun moves. It's gonna change how you set up your board. The week of the Tukufa, this is just a minimum. Ideally, we would have more days, but a minimum of three days. So the day before, the day of, and the day after. And that will help us compare the day before we'll see a slight curve, the day after we'll see a slight curve, and the day of we'll see the middle, the straight line. So that'll give us confirmation that we did indeed say, see a straight line. And I put this picture here because I had last year in June, I practiced for the first time. I had a smaller board and a, and a larger board. And you can see that my smaller board is completely covered in shadows by this tree here. But my longer board, I was able to mark the shadow. So that's why practice is important because you want to test your location. You want to test your setup just to make sure that it's right before the actual event. So where to track? Where to set up and track, you wanna put your shadow marking set up on a flat surface, AKA not a hill. So find an area also that is free from casted shadows. So you're gonna have shadows that, are, that come from trees, from buildings, all large things are going to cast a shadow. And this area should also be free from interruption. So people, animals, lawnmowers, you don't want your setup to move so put it in the area that things won't get in the way. And I put this picture here, this is my mom's front yard. So I tested the day before and I noticed right here, this is where I'm gonna get shadows from this tree in the morning. And then in the afternoon, the shadow from my mom's house, which is back here, you know, as the sun is setting, it's gonna cast a large shadow this way. So I found that this was a good area that would be free from multiple shadows. The materials that you need, you'll need a board. In this picture, I have a, a just a foam board that I got at the dollar store, or you can use a light colored piece of wood, something light colored so that you can actually see the shadow so that you can mark it. You know, obviously if this was really dark, it would be more difficult to see the shadow. You'll use a fine tip pencil to mark the shadow. You can use tiny push pins. Once you mark the shadow here, you stick a pin in it so that you know that you you marked that one for that time. A gnomon, which is just an object that will cast a shadow. So here in this picture, this is a corsage pin that I found and that's what's casting the shadow here. You'll need a camera or a phone to take pictures and a fine piece of thread. So for gnomon tips, a round push pin with a small top works well. So like I mentioned, this is a corsage pin and I, the largest that I could find was two inches. Ideally, we would have three inches or seven centimeters high, 
just because it's going to cast a larger shadow and the, and the points that you mark will be more accurate. And it needs to be stable and not move during the entire tracking. So each day, day to day, the board needs to stay in place and the gnomon needs to stay in place. And just in case you're wondering, I put this hammer here just to hold the board down because it's, you know, when it's windy, I don't want the board to move. So how to track. We run our boards from east to west with the gnomon facing north. So this is a screenshot right here of my phone. I just used the compass app. Maybe it's not exact, but it's better than nothing. So if your board is rectangular, you want your board to run from east to west because of the way that the sun moves and casts the shadow, you wanna catch all the shadows on the board itself. You wanna track for a minimum of nine to 10 hours each day. The more tracking that you have, the better. Start as early as you can, as soon as the sun is creating a shadow on your board and get as late in the day as you can before your board is covered in shadows. Because on the day before and the day after, it's gonna look pretty straight, probably until the last two markings. So the earliest you can get, the latest that you can get, the better. You'll also wanna mark solar noon, specifically solar noon, and then at least once an hour in between. So let's say you start at 7.30, go again at 8.30, 9.30, et cetera. And also note down the times that you track uh, just so you can keep track, you know, for each pin when you mark that and you pin it. Also note down the time. At the end of each day, you're going to want to take some pictures and report your data. So how to take pictures, you're going to take that fine piece of thread. You're going to connect the thread to the first data point. Just wrap it around the pin very carefully. You don't want to move the pin. Just wrap it around the first data point and then pull it straight to the last data point. Ignore everything else in between. So first and last, that's it. On the string, we, we want the string specifically to be straight because then we can confirm, okay, these pins are, they're making a curve. So we did not see the straight line this day because the string is completely way off from where the, these pins are. So just ignore everything in between, just do the first and the last, and it's best to use a very fine piece of thread just so that it's more accurate. And then there's data collection on the next page. So for data collection, we need to know the date of marking, your location, state, province, et cetera, time zone name or UTC, where, where are you in the world, <laughs> total number of shadow markings, the first marking time, so as early as you got it, the last marking time, as late as you got it, solar noon time for your specific location, and also the height of your nomen, and the length from first marking to last. You'll also wanna mark north, east, west, south, or on your picture or on your board. So if you take a picture of the board, mark it on that picture or just write it on your board. Your initials, pictures, which I explain on the next page and send everything to your team leader. For the pictures that we need, we're gonna take four pictures total. So one picture, of the entire board. That way we can see every single point that you mark. Second picture of your first marking of a close-up. Third picture, close-up of solar noon. Try to get the thread in there just again so we can compare. And a close-up of the last marking. So four pictures total. Now I wanna send some empathy here. You might be thinking, well, I can't do it perfectly so therefore I can't do it at all. Not true. I live in an apartment. I don't have private outdoor access. There's no balcony, no roof access. Unless I camped out at the park, I can't do this at home. So I travel to my parents, which is three hours in both directions. And I use the bus. <laughs> so I can't practice weeks up leading to the event. So I'm just gonna do the best that I can. I'm gonna go there Friday before, set up and practice and survey the territory on Shabbat and set up for Sunday through Thursday markings. So doing the best that you can is doing that is better than doing nothing. So some additional tips here. The first time I practiced, I used a screw 
because I thought, okay, well, if I have a pointy tip, then that's going to be really accurate marking. But you might notice in the beginning of the day and in the evening that the tip of that kind of ghosts out, it kind of disappears and gets very light. So it could be difficult to mark the exact tip. So now what I'm going to do is use those that corsage pin I showed you earlier. But we're not going to mark on the top of the, the, you can even see in this picture, it's kind of ghosting out there a little bit. It's a little fuzzy. So the best place to mark would be right here where the straight part of the pin hits the ball right there at the tip. Also, you're going to need a larger board, the larger your gnomon is. So on the left, I have one and a half inches here and a 16 by 16 board. On the right, I have a three inch gnomon and a 48 by 15 and a half board. So, and you can see the shadow here on the left. This is only a couple inches long, whereas the three inch one is very long. And this was taken at the same time, you know, same time of day. And you'll also notice that taller gnomons will create a larger distance between the markings. So the larger, the better and more accurate because then the curve is more pronounced. So again, on the left with the one and a half inch gnomon, this is one hour between these two pins. And then on the right with the three inch gnomon, this is one hour. So it's, it's like three or four times the amount uh, of distance between them just because it's double the height. Try to place your gnomon at 90 degrees. You know, we want it perpendicular to the board, not slanted. We want it straight up. And I mentioned this before, but the long boards should go east to west. So you can see on my board here, north is on the left, top is the east, west, and south. You can download the compass app that I showed you earlier. That's an easy way, or you just use a compass that you have. The shadow will be the longest when the sun is rising and setting. So my gnomon is right here. And the first marking I was able to do was 6.30 in the morning. And then that's that's a long distance from the gnomon. Whereas 5.09, you know, almost 12 hours later, it's pretty close, but you can see that that nice curve. So you might, again, you might notice it looks a little straight and then all of a sudden it curves. And the shadow will be very close to the gnomon when the sun is directly above it. So right here in that noonish area, it's going to be very, very close to the gnomon, depending on the size of it. And you can also download the measure app or use a level to make sure your board is level at, a, at zero degrees. As I mentioned, just, you know, as flat as you can get it. I would also suggest to mark each day starting with a clean slate because the push pins might get crowded. <laughs> you can see over here. It's, you know, on day one, about 944, and then day two at 1001, just 15. It's it's basically right on top of each other. And same thing here, that it's basically the same exact point. And here too, it's 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 get it gets crowded. So I would suggest doing your markings day one, take your pictures, collect your data, clear off the board, and then start fresh on day two. So I have some resources here. These links are clickable, so I will provide a link in the chat for people that are here live, and then there'll be also a link in the description of the video. But I created this document that's basically a one-page guide of everything. So everything that I just talked about is just here on this one sheet of paper. So items that you need, how to set it up, when to track, how to collect your data and take pictures, and then there's also a data collection sheet that you can print out and use to collect data. This one here is the UTC and time zone names, and this one is solar noon. So when you go to the solar noon one, you will just take this red pin that's on here and then move it to wherever you live. You can choose the day. So let's say we're doing March 19th, right here is solar noon for Wait, 6, 6, 13 p.m.? Oh, it's it's refreshing. So it'll it'll be right here. It'll tell you solar noon. So you want to make sure you mark that and also include that in your data collection. And if there are any questions, you can email questions at studythecalendar.com. Thank you so much for being here. It's a blessing. Shalom and have fun.